the Forty or Tea podcast. Do, do you want to tell us a little bit, sort of, about the work that you do and some of like the social media stuff that you do on Instagram? Yeah, absolutely. So my name is Liv, and my I'm the brand or the face or the person behind Live Label Free. Um, and my whole philosophy with Live Label Free is that I believe that. Any type of restriction or limitation um, or fear of life, of living, of anything is rooted in, in labels. Like for me personally, my eating disorder like was, was rooted in labels. Seeing food as good or bad caused me mm. to restrict certain foods. Seeing rest as lazy and exercise as productive caused me to basically run myself into a dark hole of misery. <laughs> mm. Mm. And and in society and diet culture, we see so many labels, gluten-free, dairy-free, vegan, this, blah, blah, good, healthy, bad, um, normal, not normal. Like it's, it's overwhelming, um, especially I think for neurodivergent individuals. And I think for me also, like my literal brain really took certain health recommendations growing up really t- too, I took them too literally seeing sure, like sure. as you should eat this and you should avoid that because if you if you eat cookies you'll get this illness and you'll do this and this will happen and i got all these fears around all these external labels basically plastered on to everyone cuz of course we live in a di- in a society mm-hmm, that's mm-hmm. infested with fat phobia and diet culture and keto I'm, paleo yeah vegan vegetarian pescatarian <laughs> well, like, well yeah, obviously, like, the obviously there's, there's on. caveats to those ones but and know. even with just like neurodivergence and, and autism it's like oh you're not normal or you're weird or this is a problem behavior <laughs> i'm sure, like sure. it's so not helpful yeah f- for me i mean growing up i was diagnosed with anorexia and depression as young as, as 11 and anxiety and ocd came on top of that or, um and then when i was 15 as i was tossed in and out of the treatment system I was labeled as manipulative and too complex and a hopeless case and told I was never going to get better you know all these labels just Hmm. made me really not want to live and not want to go forward with my life um, because there was so much negativity attached to them and it was really for me once I realized like trying to find validation or trying to find answers in in external circumstances was the really was the very reason actually keeping me trapped and keeping me enslaved to my external circumstances sure. and as long as you are a slave to your external circumstances i mean you can never be free because <laughs> the very definition of freedom is not being enslaved obviously so are you conforming to like if you if you're applying a label to yourself you're assuming that it's sort of like the the generalized or stereotypical idea of it so like you, you, you're always going to have to fit somewhere within that label to give yourself it. And then like, right. if you deviate out of it, you know, like, you know, if, if you give the example of autism, you know, you, you for some reason you, you stop needing to stim. Cause like for myself, like I go to the gym, so I, I don't really stim a lot. Mm-hmm. And so I don't do that. And I, I tend to make like pretty decent eye contact for, for neurotypical standards. And so, so I meet all of these these right. sort of criteria that kind of don't fit with autism. And so, yeah, I, I mean, I've been trying to make like quite a few reels and like posts on that kind of stuff nowadays because, you know, people people do have, especially people outside of like the autistic community, they have an idea of like certain traits that they've heard from. Yeah a family member or they've seen on TV, oh, autistic people don't do this, this, and this. So they kind of use it as like a confirmation bias. It's like, okay, they don't make eye contact. Oh, they must be autistic. Or they do. They're not not autistic. Yeah. I love that you just brought that up also about like I make eye contact for good neurotypical standards and um, I I don't stim that much and kind of – I I really like that you brought that up because it kind of breaks that stigma around like autism imposter syndrome that we hear a lot or read a lot about. Because for me too, like the reason why my autism went undiagnosed for over 20 years was because I seemed to be functioning perfectly fine, right? And Mm -hmm. then we can bring it back into those functioning labels that are also so harmful. And for me, like... The the very nature of the diagnosis is it's, you know, 
medical diagnoses are there for things that cause dysfunction, like things that cause some level of disability. Because yeah. it's like, you know, for for example, you know, the support that you would receive from getting an, an autism diagnosis, uh, if you don't need that support, then medical practitioners don't really see a need for it. Right. Um, it's it's more for, but for us you know obviously it's it's great to kind of have that that validation from like an external medical scientific thing and you know and it is it's only really at points in people's lives if they're if they're not diagnosed when they're younger it's at the points where they're having a really hard time and then they go and they're like hey look there's the, i show these these this and this signs of autism you know so so the ignition is the actual issues that you have and that that kind of encourages people to go for it, but it also encourages like the medical system to to diagnose you. So like right. if you're not having any issues with it, like you know if if you're not finding that in, in your eyes autism is is causing you any issues, then you know it's it's quite hard to go for a diagnosis. Like right. Yeah, and and you mentioned a key word, um, which I think is really important to bring up, and that word is dysfunction, um, mm. because I actually have a line in my upcoming memoir um, that reads, "But Livia, isn't autism a label?" <laughs> <laughs> and and I go into that because it's like, yeah, of course, autism is a label, and I do label myself as an autistic person. Um, but again, the key word here is is function or dysfunction because. The, the autistic label, knowing that I'm autistic and being able to label certain traits or behaviors as, oh, these are autistic traits that are part of me and help me function and help me be better. Like I said, they help me function. They help me be my full self. Whereas labels such as labeling food as good or bad or unhealthy or saying mm -hmm. I am anorexic or bulimic or I am disordered or I am wrong or I am bad or I need to feel guilty for this. These, the, the kind of restrictive yes, labels they, rather than... Right. They do not help us function. They they mm. cause dysfunction, right? That's yeah, why it's called yeah. a disorder. And that's why I, I hate the terminology of autism spectrum disorder because i'm like it is not a disorder <laughs> but but again there we go with the labels right and i think it's really important when it comes to labels and if you do find yourself labeling things like i don't think there's anything inherently wrong with labeling again because la labeling labeling like... as wrong would just be another label <laughs> But it's really about looking at what is the intention behind this? Is this serving a purpose? Is this actually helping me function? Or is this mm -hmm, mm -hmm. limiting me or restricting me from living to my full potential? Because in the end, I think that's all what we're here to do is to find people and discover ourselves so that we can live to our full potential.